Hopefully you don't have a lumbago right now. If you do, don't panic. I am Roland Liebscher Bracht, and first I will explain to you why it hurts so brutally, and then we will do some exercises that give you a good chance of diminishing the pain. And I brought Renee along. Hi. And now I make a small movement, and Renee has a back spasm. Palm. Ah. This is the position in which the sciatica patients suffer the most. And if you tell a patient with lumbago to stand up straight, the lumbago won't go up a millimeter. And Renee, relax. Thank you for your effort. We'll get rid of your lumbago right away. But first, the explanation. How does a lumbago occur? Because if you know that, then you lose your fear. Because most people think, yes, now I have a herniated disc, or something is broken, or somehow a nerve is pinched in a very brutal way. Most of the time, it is something completely different. Very simply explained. What do we do for far too long without balancing it? How do we sleep? Sitting. While sitting, hold me steady, please, Renee. While sitting, the angle here is always 90 degrees. That means the hip flexor is getting shorter and shorter. That happens on both sides. That means normally we would walk around like this, but now the back extensors and gluteal muscles are contracting against it and lifting us back up. The result is strong tension in the front, strong tension in the back, strong pressure on the intervertebral discs, stressed situation in the entire back and hip area, because it simply is not balanced in most people. And this stress increases over the course of months and years, perhaps decades, more and more. And eventually, there's the situation where perhaps you're working in the garden, you're bent over and tending your bed, and you do that for a while, and eventually someone calls out, food's ready. You throw the hoe away, pull yourself up, then an invisible force pulls you back down, and you think, what am I doing down here? I actually wanted to go eat. You want to stand up again, and then the back spasm hits you right in the middle of that movement. What's happening? That's very simple. All the muscles here in front, pectoral muscles, hip flexors, all of them are very stressed. Now they go into their resting position because it is shorter there and they don't have to be stressed. They rest in their shortening and feel comfortable in their shortening. If you suddenly go up, this movement causes a shock for these stressed muscles and there are muscle spindles and that's what these little particles are called. They trigger a counter-reaction, and this counter-reaction is a strong contraction of all the muscles involved. Contraction means they contract because they are overwhelmed and want to know what's going on there first. And that's the movement that most people don't consciously perceive. But if you ask more precisely, and if you have ever experienced a lumbago, then you can understand that. Because they all say, I wanted to lift up, I wanted to lift a box of water from the luggage, so from the trunk, or I wanted to somehow throw something up, something like that is said. And then they say, then suddenly I was down again, don't know why, and when I wanted to go up, I felt like a knife was stabbed into my back like a lightning bolt, and I have the lumbago. So a lumbago is nothing more than an overreaction of these muscles, which are brutally contracted. And that's why this is the typical posture, the typical lumbago posture, and even the slightest movement is very, very painful. Why does it hurt? Because when everything is contracted here in the front and doesn't give in, I now pull myself up against this tension with the muscles in the back. Then my intervertebral discs are compressed so brutally that they would immediately be susceptible to the side wall tearing. So you get a herniated disc or something else bad and the body wants to warn against it. And this danger is so present in this situation that the body not only sends mild pain but sends this insane sciatic pain. Renee, you said earlier that you used to have sciatic pain. Yes. How long ago was that? Two, three years. You were there, you told me, oh, it's quite easy, we can handle it. And we did handle it, it was just one day. I forgot. Okay, but never mind. But lumbago sounds quite good. But how did you get it? Do you still remember? In the morning, I got up. I couldn't get out of bed. I rolled out of bed because I was basically super stiff. And that's also... 
And were you bent forward? Yes, here. I have been running the whole time and then I tripped. Exactly, that is exactly what I explained. Okay, now let's move on to the solution of the whole thing. But that can take away your fear, because remember, with a lumbago, nothing necessarily has to be broken. And even if an intervertebral disc has something, it is also not bad, because in most cases, it has nothing to do with the pain according to our experience. But how do you deal with this situation? Let's do a representation. How is it exactly? And now imagine we have a bed there, not quite so deep. We have to calculate a little higher now. Now try to sit down on the floor. With my lumbago, of course? With your lumbago, yes. Oh, that would be difficult. So you have to somehow go down, yes, but that is anyway what is also recommended, that one then. Now lie on your back, put your calves on there. The calves? Put your calves on there, exactly. So, this is the so-called step positioning. You may know it because it has been recommended before, yes. And why is this step-by-step -step elevation so relaxing for the body now? Because in this resting position, the shortening in the front is not stretched longer, and therefore it is stress-free. And this is how you can help yourself. You lie like this, but not to stay lying there, because then nothing would change. But the next step would be... For example, if possible, let's lift the legs and put the feet down and keep the knees up. Where do I place my feet? Yes, exactly. You put your feet on the floor or on the bed. In this case, you might be lying in bed or on the floor. Wherever you are lying, yes. So, still in the bent hip position and all is well. And then you try to walk forward very carefully with your feet so that the knees come down a little bit. And a little bit more, a little bit more, and assuming here it pulls again now, here it starts to pull, you notice, oh, now the pain begins, which torments me there. No, 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 don't move at all, then you stay just like that. Maybe you also put something underneath, take a few pillows and put them under the knee. You can sleep like that too, whatever, yes. And whenever you notice that the tension on your back decreases, you go a little further forward and then stop and gradually go down with your knees until you can eventually straighten your legs. And when you are in the right position, then you have it somewhat under control again, because now the length is there when standing, and you don't have to stand bent forward anymore, you can stand straight. And when the position is reached, which sometimes happens very quickly, yes, within a few hours, it can be improved by getting into a hot bathtub, because what does that do? Hot water and the warmth relax the muscles, including this stressed hip flexor here in front. All these muscles, which ultimately are the cause of the lumbago, and then it makes it easier for you to go into this position. And when you have reached the position, then you roll onto your stomach. I do that? Roll onto your stomach. If one can. Yes, and you stay lying down for now. And then you would start to position the elbows. No, actually push yourself up on the forearms. Yes, you have your arms here, and then you push yourself forward here, yes. And then maybe you notice, oh, now it starts to pull again. Yes. Then you stay like that. Maybe put two or three pillows underneath. Then you come up a little higher, yes. Bring your elbows a little closer to your body so that the shoulders are pushed up higher, yes. And that is already a situation where most people who do not have lumbago already have a problem with stretching. And every time when it echoes like that, and maybe the next morning you notice, oh, it tightens more in the back, you do exactly this sequence in a quick run-through. Do them as often as possible, and then you can continue with the other exercises against back pain. And to make it easy for you, there is a routine that you can click here, a routine against back pain, which prevents you from getting a lumbago in the first place. That's it for today. Any more questions from you? You explained everything wonderfully. I just wanted to know, is the goal of the whole thing basically to get back up there at some point? I didn't want to go that far, but that's the goal. 
although that already goes far beyond just getting rid of the back spasm because it's about your back not itching anymore, which is a big luxury. Farewell, back spasm. Farewell, back spasm. Goodbye.